What's up, Covalence friends? We get quite a few questions about TypeScript in particular, and one of the big questions asked by every newbie TypeScript developer is where do we define our types, right? Where do we define our interfaces? Where do we define our enums? And do we define them in the global namespace? Do we put them in a TS file and import them in everywhere that we need them? And my answer to that question is all of the above. So let's get right into it. All right, so we're starting off with a very basic Express Server template. The link to this template's actually in the description below. And more or less, this is about as bare bones as you can get when it comes to you know a template of any kind. Uh, our server is basically in the root folder. Now you could actually separate all this out and have like a server folder and a client folder. It could get wildly more complex as you're gonna have you know like something like doing like a React uh, type of app. Um, this is just a very basic template that just uses TypeScript and has a single app.ts in here. And we'll kind of put some additional pages in here just to kind of mimic what it would be like if you had a larger project. But for the most part, this demonstration will translate very well into larger projects with different setups and different organizational structures. But more or less, what I like to do is for models that are gonna be used across the entire app. Like pretend you have a team that's kind of working on different aspects of this application, right? You might have a team of three four developers, right? Working on the same project and different parts of this project, right? For models like such as database models that could be used across different views and that kind of thing, I feel like it's important to use .d.ts files. And I feel like what I would typically do is at the root of your project, I would have a typings folder and you might have something like an index.d.ts, let's just say, right? Now, in my mind, it's super important that you don't want to populate just kind of like the global object, right? When it comes to typings and IntelliSense and whatnot. And so I always suggest that you use a namespace, right? So something simple like namespace models works. And then inside your namespace models, you'd have your interface, you know, I user, let's just say, right? We'll say ID, let's just do a number and we'll say email string, right? And you'd have additional things in here, just like um, interface, right, I post, ID number, you know, name, string, and then body string, right? So you'd have your, you know, essentially all of your models def defined in here. Now it's possible that you may wanna have different server and client models, right? So in that case, I would actually have a sub namespace, right? Such as server. And then I'd have my server.i user in here, right? So you'd have your server i user, and then you could have a namespace client, and then you might have a slightly different I user in your client namespace, right? And so the difference here might be something like, all right, first name, and then on the client, you may always do camel case, right? Whoa. Right, or you might have some sort of translation layer where you're converting, let's just say first name and last name Right, and then you might have some full name property on the client, right? So there might be some sort of transform that's happening from server to client. And then you might have some kind of model that kind of isn't defined for either the server or the client. So basically what I'm getting at though, is that you want to structure out your namespaces so that you make it as clear as possible for somebody who's gonna jump in here, first day on the job, they're gonna be able to find what they need and they're gonna be able to reference the exact same typings as everyone else, right? Now. Secondly, if you're trying to overwrite a particular library, like let's say Express, for instance, since we're using Express, I always like including a separate .d.ts file for this. So something like express.t.ts. Now in here you would obviously uh, to overwrite it. Now there's different ways to overwrite properties for Express in particular, you can just actually extend the interface. So you can just extend request, um, make sure you spell interface right. And in here you would say uh, something like user is models.i models.server.i user, right? So you'd have something like that, and you're saying that request.user is now models.server.i user, right? And now when we go into our router, for instance, right, we could just say something like res.json request.user. And now request.user, if we look at it, it's going to be models.server.i user, right? Which is what we want. So in particular, I don't think you're actually populating or sorry, I don't think you're actually encroaching on any type of global namespace. So if, if we just wanted to say let X is of type, you know, models dot 
server dot i user. All right, having this in here is not going to be, um, I guess, polluting your global namespaces. You want to have your models accessible anywhere, and you don't want to have to be importing them all over the place, right? Now, that's only in my mind for models that are going to be used across the entire application. There are cases where you might be using only models for your own needs right now. So if you if you want some sort of private interface or private model that you're going to be using, let's just say we have um, a pages folder and let's say this pages folder, we're just going to put a TypeScript folder. Let's just say, you know, home.ts right now in your home.ts file, you might be having some tests in here, right? You might actually typically you'd actually have a separate folder for your home and then you'd have your home.ts inside of that home folder. And then you might have something like a home.test.ts, right? So then you'd have all your tests in here. Let's just say you're using something like Jest. And in your test folder, right, you may actually have some mock-up data or something along the lines where you want to use some sort of private interface, right? Now, in that case, I would not put that in your typings. I would not put that in your actual index.d.ts. I wouldn't even create a .d.ts file for it. I would put it in the actual file itself. Now, if that if that needs to be referenced in another file, let's just say you have multiple tests, right? Let's just say you have a home.test.ts and you have you know a separate test file in here, or you have you know a component, right? Let's just say, and you have to import the interface of that component, right? So let's just do that real quick. We'll have our components folder, and in here we'll have something like uh, you know navbar. And then we'll have our you know, navbar.ts. And in our navbar.ts, you know, let's just say we're the only ones working on this navbar.ts, and this navbar is only going to be present on the home page. Let's just say, right? Now, typically you might not need to create a component for this case, but let's just say you wanted to create a, com a component for this case and you did not want to use this navbar anywhere else. So in this particular case, you may want to actually export an interface for this, right? So you'd export interface. Um, I navbar and you know, you'd have all of your navbar properties in here. Let's just say, um, I don't know, title, right. And icon, right. So you have your title and your icon and now in your home, let's just say home, let's just say it could be home.test.ts. You would actually be importing from component slash navbar slash navbar, right? You'd be actually importing your interfaces. So I navbar, and then you'd be able to reference this I navbar type in your home.test, right? So this way it kind of creates a little bit more seclusion and the ability to kind of keep everything separate and you're not going to be polluting that names or the global namespace, right? For models only. And so I would suggest kind of using that you know, typical structure. Um, and then the last use case I would say is that sometimes you need to modify a global model to use it in your particular component. So let's just say for in the nav bar, right? We, you know, we write some code, but in this particular case, we need to pull down a, um, a user type that we're going to be putting in there, but to make it work for our particular case, we need an additional property on there that we're going to underscore, let's just say, right? So, uh, let's just say we want to, um, define an interface that's going to be I ext user and it's going to extend um, models dot client dot I user and we're going to put something like you know underscore is admin boolean right now this property doesn't exist on the actual model but we need it for this nav bar only right and we're not going to be using this property anywhere else right so if we're using this property anywhere else we may actually define an additional area for the client, or we might actually put it on the client itself, right? As part of our, um, let's see, if we, as part of our actual client.i user, we may actually have some sort of is admin property if we are going to use that elsewhere, right? But in our particular case, we're not going to be using it elsewhere. We're only going to be using it in this nav bar. So we are going to define it in this file and we're going to use it in this file. And again, if you need it for a particular test like home.test.ts, you would export it and you would only import it here, right? So in this sense, I feel like you get the best of all worlds and you utilize, you know, the global properties as well. And at least when you're using VS code, right? Most IDEs nowadays will respect the .d.ts files, especially when using with TypeScript and if they have TypeScript support, you should be good. And in this case, I feel like, you know, it provides the easiest form of development 
um, and the quickest form of development for teams that are one person all the way up to as many as you need, right? All right, so I tried to keep that as straightforward as possible. If you guys have any comments or suggestions, feel free to drop them below in the comment section and just let us know what you think because honestly, this is still just an opinion and it's our opinion, but we feel that it works the best for projects, whether it's small or large, and it seems to work really well for our own developmental projects. So again, make sure you subscribe to our channel for any future releases, future updates, future videos. And if you have any suggestions as far as additional videos and additional content goes, let us know. Check out our merch store and we'll see you soon.